Washington Grown is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Agriculture's Specialty Crop Block Grant Program and Northwest Farm Credit Services, supporting agriculture and rural communities with reliable, consistent credit and financial services today and tomorrow. Hi everyone, I'm Christy Gordson and welcome to Washington Grown. I'm at Deutsche Fest, which is a German festival in Odessa, Washington, and we are surrounded by beer, brats, and Washington potatoes. In this episode, we're going to explore the German roots of Washington and delicious potato cuisine. We'll be in the kitchen at Reinhaus making a traditional hot German potato salad. Awesome. Ooh, that's good. Then we'll visit Stahl Farms, a Hooterite colony potato farm with German roots. And when I go to a restaurant, I order potatoes. I get some potatoes. <laughs> and we'll say Prost at Deutsches Fest in Odessa. This is Deutsches Fest on a plate. All this and much more today on Washington Grown. We grow them big yeah, in Washington. Grow, yeah. You're like, I can put her to work. Right now. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, are you getting tired already? No. I... <laughs> Am I doing this right? It's like Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory. This is one of the hardest things I've ever done on this show. Cheers. Thanks for having us. We're in Seattle's Capitol Hill neighborhood at the 10,000 square foot slice of Bavaria, Reinhaus. In this burly beer hall, it's Oktoberfest every day of the year with homemade sausages, fresh baked pretzels, and a unique flair on traditional German cuisine. It's good to like hang out with a couple of beers. It's a nice place for friends to gather, to see other people. It's just a nice Northwest experience. There'll be 50 kids running around on the Bosch ball courts, having fun, yeah. families. Cool. And then by Saturday night at 11 o'clock, it's, you know, it's all college kids. One of the most unique items on the menu is the giant pretzel. And then we have the giant pretzel. <laughs> she described it as a, uh, a steering wheel made out of pretzel. The pretzel bits are the bomb. But it's not just the pretzels, beer, brats, and bocce ball that keep people coming back. We tried to take these traditional dishes and step them up a little bit yeah. and just make them so they're a little bit more you know, public friendly. I really like the fact that there's a German twist or Northwest uh, ingredients. We love that it's homegrown. And this is a local beer. One of the most common ingredients that chef Peter Fiosny uses in his German cuisine are, of course, potatoes. Don't miss later in the show when chef Fiosny and I make one of the most famous German foods, an authentic hot German potato salad. Well, cheers. Can't wait to do it. <laughs> Next, we're heading to Ritzville, Washington to visit Stahl Farms, a Hooterite colony farm. Hooterites are communal, humble, and hardworking people and earn most of their income from farming. And today, Pastor Edward Stahl is showing me around. So what's a day in the life of Edward Stahl? Work, work, work. <laughs> About 90 people live in this Hooterite colony, and while most of the men are working out in the fields for harvest today, the women and children are here on the compound. Our ladies are homemakers. Mm -hmm. They take care of the kids, mm -hmm. and they take care of all the food. They're the hardest workers. I bet. So this is your place? This is my home. How nice is this? And so you, all this woodwork, yes. the cabinets, are you guys did this? Yes. Yes. This is sermons, guys. Oh, wow, yeah. All the Hutterites speak, speak German. German. I'll show you something. For the ungodly wesen und die listen. It teaches us to get rid of all the bad habits uh -huh. and grab or take on some good habits. And you're farmers. We are farmers. That's what the, that's what the Hutterites do. We don't know of anything else. All the money that is being generated goes into one pot, and everybody is taken care of from cradle to grave. We then head to the community center to talk with some of the ladies. We have a lot of German dishes. Yeah, um, our lunches are very yeah. hot right type of meals. Yeah. What are some of your favorite ways to use potatoes? Like potato wedgies, yeah. um, 
roasted potatoes. After lunch, we're meeting with Edward's brother, John Stahl, who's going to teach us about their farms. We stumbled onto this venture in 1980, uh -huh. where there was 60 acres and uh, once a potato grower, you're always one. How many acres of potatoes do you farm? We're a little north of uh, 5,000. Wow, that's a lot so, of potatoes. Well, feed the world. It keeps us busy. This is uh, the best growing area in the world, is what I'm hearing, in Washington State. And you guys aren't afraid of technology? No. Yeah. We gotta keep up. Even I can drive a tractor now and <laughs> push a button and go straight. Yeah. The cost of growing today is through storage, you're over $4,000 an acre. So there's no room for hiccups. After harvesting out in the fields, about 320 loads of potatoes are brought to this storage facility every day. Here, they're run through an eliminator, which takes out the dirt, sent to a picking table, and then conveyed into storage. There's 10,000 tons per bay. So per there's 40,000 here in this complex. A lot of potatoes, and this is just, this is only part of. Yeah, we got a few of those. You got a few of them. Yes. Where do your potatoes go? Where do they end up? We're contracted 99.9% .9 to Lamb Weston, okay. which is a processor. So your potatoes probably get turned into French, French fries. fries on them so your, your potatoes look big. That's perfect yep. for those French fries, right? Yes. Yeah, look at those. These are big. They're huge. We have potatoes three, di three times a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And when I go to a restaurant, I order potatoes. I get some potato. <laughs> the Hutterites, I would say, as a whole, that's all they know. Mm -hmm. I got into this deal when I was young, and I learned from other growers. And when I go, it stays. So from their gracious community to their impressive operations, the Hooterites' passion for growing food that feeds the world will last for generations to come. Firemen is their deal. Mm -hmm. We want to farm because it's a, it's a great life. If you're like me and have driven on I-90, you've passed Western Polymer outside of Moses Lake, and you might not know what they do until now. I visited President and CEO Lynn Townsend White to learn about this 66-year-old company and what they do. Western Polymer is a potato starch manufacturer or processor. We buy our starch from french fry companies and potato chip companies, and we bring it here and process it into different products. Western Polymer works with french fry processors in the area to gather as much starch as possible. When you cut a potato, sometimes you'll see white starch or whiteness on your knife. Yeah. That's the starch okay. coming out of the cell in the potato. So when they shoot millions of pounds of potatoes through these knives, you're going to get millions of pounds of starch in the process water. So we work with the processors to recover that water and recover the starch out of that water. Nice, and so how's that starch used? There's a couple, well, many uses for it, but we do two different things, processes here. We either do industrial starches or, or food grade starches. The industrial starch is used mainly in paper products like paper plates, paper sacks, cardboard, even tissue. Their food starches are also used in a variety of ways. In the gluten-free market, it's often used in baked goods. You can do a modified potato starch that goes into different kinds of um, coatings for french fries and all kinds of things. The food starch goes through an intense food safety and quality assurance process, and I got a behind-the-scenes look. What's happening right here? This is starch coming off of our vacuum filter, and the vacuum filter actually dewaters the starch. Okay. It takes it from uh, like 30% solids to 60% solids. It goes out, goes through the dryer, and comes back over those screens. There are several screens in there that sift it. Right. And then it drops down into a silo, and then it's uh, blown over to our warehouse and packaging building. Gotcha. So this is pretty much the, the epicenter of everything. It all happens here in this big room. Correct. Gotcha. Once the starch has been processed, it's packaged into bags and totes for customers. Well, Lynn, thank you so much for showing me around. Uh, I have a, a much greater appreciation for potato starch now and what it's for. Good. So it was a pleasure. Well, thank you're you. You're very welcome. Thank, thank you so you. much, and thank, thank you for what you do. What percentage of Washington potato farms are family owned? Find out after the break. Coming up, we're making a hot German potato salad at Reinhaus. Well, so. That's good. 
and will be in the second Harvest Kitchen trying out a viewer's potato recipe that has a traditional European flair. Ninety-nine percent of Washington potato farms are family-owned. We're back at Reinhaus on Capitol Hill, where people of all ages gather to enjoy giant pretzels, brats, beer, and authentic German cuisine. It's always an interesting uh, take to see different cultures applied to our uh, ingredients that you can find only here. Chef Biosny uses potatoes in many dishes at Reinhaus, including dumplings, potato pancakes, mashed potatoes, french fries, and of course, German potato salad. We tried to take these traditional dishes and kind of just step them up a little bit yeah. and just make them so they're a little bit more you know, public friendly so like anybody can come in here and they can find something on the menu that yeah. is going to appeal to them. Today we're going to make a warm German potato salad with uh, Yukon gold potatoes, parsley, pickled shallots, and uh, a little bit of bacon and a mustard vinegar. That sounds delicious. Let's do it. Right. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks for having us. Thank you. We began our warm German potato salad by pickling shallots. We put white wine vinegar, sugar, bay leaves, coriander, and dill seed in a pot and wait for it to boil. This is just a real quick pickle. We're basically heating this up and then pouring it over the, the sliced shallots. Okay. Then cover the pickling shallots and leave them for 10 to 15 minutes. When they're finished, they'll have a nice pink color to them. Next, we dice applewood smoked bacon. And for the bacon, I started out on high heat and just so, cause we want to kind of render some of that fat down mm -hmm. and then uh, and then crisp it up slightly. Okay, vinaigrette. so next we're gonna make the mustard vinaigrette. Okay. Um, basically a vinaigrette is usually like a three to one vinegar to oil, mm -hmm. cause we want to get that nice emulsification. To make the vinaigrette, we add French whole grain mustard, white wine vinegar, local honey, sea salt, and black pepper. Then we blend it together and slowly add canola oil to the mix. And we don't want it too salty either because we season the potatoes and we're gonna be seasoning the dish as we go along as well, Ooh, so. That's good. Yeah, it has a little bit of, little bit of bite to it. It does. But that mustard really right. comes through nicely. Next, we're going to slice our potatoes. These are Yukon Gold potatoes. Okay. I believe they came from uh, Eastern Washington. Awesome, um, we love that. So one thing when you're cooking potatoes, um, pretty much any like anything that comes out of the ground and you're, and you're blanching mm -hmm. it or poaching it, you want to start with cold water. Cold water. Um, if you start with hot hot water, it, you, it ends up cooking it too fast. And for this, like uh, we just use a mandolin. mandolin. I mean, you can always just use a knife. They don't have to be perfect. Mm -hmm. Once the potatoes are sliced, we put them into cold salted water and bring them to a simmer. Cook until the potatoes are soft, but still have some bite to them. I just eat this whole thing. Yeah, they're it's good. Essence. They're almost like so a... good, yeah. Now we can start to assemble the potato salad. First, we add bacon to a hot pan, and then we add our pickled shallots and potatoes. And with a warm potato salad, um, it's just supposed to be warm. It doesn't need to be like cooked all the way through mm -hmm. and like really hot. And see, I would like start stirring, and then they would no. break apart. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. Like, <laughs> I always like to have like different like kind of texture variances. Okay. Like some some pieces that are a little bit more cooked, uh -huh. some some that are a little under. It just makes it more fun when okay. you're eating it. Next, we add the vinaigrette, Italian parsley, and black pepper to the pan. Then we stir it together and let it cook for about a minute. It looks gorgeous with the green, the parsley in there. Yeah. Now we get to try this delicious dish. This is comfort food right here. It is. Mm. Oh, that's really good. Yum. German potato salad. And this is, you know, your... if you're in Bavaria, like this is, this is what it's gonna, mm -hmm. it's gonna be mm -hmm. as traditional as we want to get. Warms you up, <laughs> so good. To find the recipe for Reinhaus's hot German potato salad, go to wagrone.com. We know them as spuds, tubers, taters, and potatoes. But how about kartoffeln? Potatoes make up a large part of the average German diet. Whether in soups, mashed, hashed, or served as fries or chips, each person in Germany consumes an average of 125 pounds of potatoes a year. One of the most well-known dishes to come out of Deutschland is the hot German potato salad, which usually includes bacon, mustard, fresh herbs, onions, vinegar, and of course, potatoes. If you're planning on making this scrumptious classic, what are the best potatoes to use? 
Well, let's ask our produce manager, Ralph, to find out. The best potatoes for your German potato salad is a waxy, low-starch potato, your red or gold, or your fingerlings. They work great, they keep their shape, and they cook up well. Thanks, Ralph. Those waxy potatoes sound perfect for potato salad. You can also use Yukon Gold for my favorite dish, potatoes au gratin, or use those russets for mashing, baking, frying, and for dishes like German potato pancakes or potato dumplings. But whichever potato you choose, don't forget to say Dankeschön or thank you to a farmer for delicious Washington potatoes. Coming up, we'll be tasting our way around Deutsches Fest in Odessa. This is Deutsches Fest on a plate. Hey, let's go! Today I'm out in Tacoma, checking out the Bavarian food truck Itty Bitty Schnitty, who's serving up all your German favorites. Amber, how you doing? Hey, I'm doing well. Thanks for coming out. Okay, Itty Bitty Schnitty. What Itty a name. Schnitty, yep. Tell me about that. <laughs> so, you know, um, I knew I wanted to open an Austrian German food truck because that's where my family's from, nice. close to my heart. The truck gets a lot of, you know, fun looks and people laugh and it was intended to be that way. <laughs> Now, what's one of your signature dishes that we're going to be talking about today? So the itty bitty schnitty is our most popular okay. dish. That's our miniature schnitzel. So we take pork, pound it out really flat, and okay. uh, bread it and deep fry it. Oh, and then you get man. a side dish with that, all for $8. It's a really good deal. And this particular side dish that we're working on today is? Our potato dumplings. Awesome. I got to go for these potatoes first. Absolutely. Because, oh man, look how dense those things are. That's just full of flavor, I can tell. Awesome. They're so smooth and creamy. So I know I love it. Well, let's see what everybody else thinks. All right. So now, Beata, I understand you're German descent, correct? Yes. So you know your dumplings. Oh, yes. Well, I'm going to have you try this awesome potato dumpling right here from Itty Bitty Schnitty. Well, what makes a good dumpling? Well, it has to be soft. It has to be exciting. It has to feel on your tongue like an adventure. Those are fantastic. Very flavorful. Is this a worthy dumpling? Oh, yes. Good flavor and nice and soft. I'd love to know what they put in these. I'll tell you what they, they put taste in those. Way better than the ones my grandma. Those made. are made with Washington potatoes. That's probably what it is. <laughs> There's no better place to celebrate German potatoes than at Deutsches Fest. Today we're talking with Zach Schaefer, the organizer of Deutsches Fest in Odessa. We've been doing this 48 years now. Um, there's a lot of small town festivals. Uh, we're pretty proud of ours. Um, and a lot of people, I think, share that sentiment with us. At the festival, there's dancing, live music, a street fair, family fun, and food and beer that will knock your lederhosen socks off. What do you think it is about this festival that keeps people coming back? I think it's the camaraderie of the people of Odessa. Obviously we have a German heritage and the, the Germans were very hardworking people and that's, that's what our community really embraces. And it takes those same characteristics to pull off this event. You know, I'm the proprietor of Rocky Cooley Brewing Company, so we make a lot of the beer for yeah. uh, the event. You're an important guy. Well, I, I guess. <laughs> Does Deutsches Fest, do they carry on some German traditions? over this weekend? We or? do. As you may see, we have people wearing uh, German-themed uh, clothing, you know, yeah. authentic dirndls or German dresses and lederhosen that many people have purchased, you know, from Germany that are shipped mm -hmm. over here. I have a set from when I was, I believe, three years old that my son will be wearing tomorrow. So That's they're so they're 35 years old that were made by my grandmother. Yeah, so. I love it. Many German recipes have been handed down through generations as well, and potatoes are often a key ingredient. Probably number three on the list but Is behind. Beer number one? Well, beer and sausage are number one and number two, and I don't know which is one or two, but potatoes are right in there. This is Deutsches Fest on a plate, as far as I'm concerned. And what is it called? It is called Kartoffelenklaes. Previous generations of Germans that came over ate very economically. Sure. So it's basically so this is an flour and water and things that they grew 
Yeah. And had in their homes, you know, the, the cream from their cows and yeah. potatoes out of their gardens right. and stuff. It's yummy. Mm. We sell a lot of it. Good it's a very popular food. dish. Yeah. Yes. That yep. is like a warm potato hug. I'll just you take that. Yes, you can. <laughs> we continue on our food walk discovering more and more delicious German dishes. Apple strudel at this booth, which is all the ladies of the church spend hours. Oh. It's a, really an art form where they stretch out these yeah, giant pieces really. of dough. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. So there's brats here and of course the hand cut curly fries. That's how they serve them up, <laughs> just a big old brick and they are fantastic. I bet. Hot German, Hot potato, German salad. potato salad. Very good. They sell kraut ranzas, which now, are that? a kraut ranza is basically like a big biscuit that's stuffed with sauerkraut and ham or or bacon kuchen, which is a, a basically a German dessert. Yeah, it's all <laughs> it's all pretty good food. Yeah. You really can't go wrong. With our tummies full, it's time to say Auf Wiedersehen to Deutsches Fest with a cheer. Prost. Prost. Tomas and I are at the kitchen at Second Harvest and we're joined by Laurent Zarati, the chef and owner of Fleur de Sel Restaurant and Creperie. And we love being here at Second Harvest. And you actually do some cooking here, right? I, some I do. Classes? I give a class uh, to uh, teach people how to cook with uh, the produce they receive here at Second Harvest. Fresh produce, um, simple food for everyday uh, lunch and dinner, but uh, good, good uh, spirit, good yeah. food fresh food, and, um, and you're going to learn a lot yeah. from your class. Really. Oh, well, thank you. I, reason, I hope they do. The reason we're here today with our forks and napkins is because we get to taste some recipes that were sent in by you, the viewer, and it's really fun. Yes, it is. We love oh. getting the recipes, and we love to try them. And today, the ingredient is potatoes, and Second Harvest receives tons of potatoes straight from the fields. Farmers bring truckloads here. So have you oh, done I classes know. with potatoes I did, before? I did. Uh, you say potato, I say potato. But uh, <laughs> but it's uh, all kinds of potatoes from the russet, the Yukon gold, the red, uh, and, and it's all different. And uh, you can make so many different things with potatoes. Yeah. When I'm trying to come up with something that's easy for the family and, and fairly quick is a, just a baked potato. I mean, yeah. you know, Big old russet. Exactly. Yeah. Got to do that. So oh, the recipe great. that we're going to be doing today uh, is called <laughs> Grant's Temptation. Oh, I don't go. know who Grant is or why he needs to be tempted, but this is from viewer Elise, and she says this is sort of a Scandinavian uh, dish. Okay. Um, has some anchovies in it, and she says don't be afraid. So she yeah. says it makes it taste smooth with a tiny hint of the ocean. Oh, yeah. That. I cannot yeah. wait to so taste So we're going to be tempted, just Ooh, like Grant. Just like Grant was. <laughs> First, we need to learn how it's made. Here you go.
like, who's ready for that? I am ready. I cannot. The smell is fantastic. It's what you call au gratin. That's right. Au gratin. Any bubbly potato dish. Is there I a mean, French uh, equivalent of what this would, what you call this, or? Gratin. 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 Gratin, gratin. gratin, gratin. of potatoes. It uh, smells like comfort food, it. Oh. right? That's what I'm thinking. Mm. I love the bread crumbs on top. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Those potatoes are cooked perfectly. Those yeah. are nice. Feels like there is some fish, you know? <laughs> just a touch, just a but hint of the ocean. Just a but touch. It's, it's perfect. It's it perfect. perfect. And Walla Walla sweet onions are in there too. I, I love so that. We love... It brings some sweetness to the dish. Good. That with a good glass of white wine. Oh, It'd yeah. Be perfect. Perfect. You know, that as an appetizer, you do a little uh, oh, yeah. au gratin dish. Mm -hmm. I never would have thought about having anchovies with my potatoes, but, but it works. I think I'm gonna make it at home. Nice. nice. I do, I like it. All I right. love it. So Elise, we wanna thank you. Oh the Elise, Elise, thank you. It's awesome. Yes. Dankeschön. <laughs> <laughs> to get Elise's recipe for Grant's Temptation, visit wagrone.com. German potato dishes like this one are an international delight, and we're lucky with Washington potatoes, we get to try them too. That's it for this episode of Washington Grown. Thanks for watching. <laughs>